Welcome to another edition of The Bucking Dead. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of EPL on the Class is in session, hitting the books on Pub Sports. This is another exciting edition of The Main Event on Talking Ants. <laughs> Hey, welcome back, everybody, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. We are back at it. Here we are at PGA Pub Hub. It's uh, that time again, guys. Major season is upon us. Uh, we got some special guests for you guys. We uh, just finished up, actually, the, uh, the, the AT&T. So we got a, a winner, first-time winner in a while, Mr. Jason Day. Shout out to Jason Day. Live Golf's yeah. going on, too, guys. It's, uh, it's an action-packed time for golf, and uh, we're excited to break down what we got this, uh, this year, guys. It's the PGA Championship. At Oak Hill Country Club, Rochester, New York. Connor, how you doing, my guy? I'm good. Uh, I'm pumped up uh, for the PGA this week. And yeah, yeah. shout out to uh, Jason Day. We talked about it. The win was coming. The game is getting there. A personal life and everything else is yep. back. Everything. Um, man, I'd like to look at him this week, but I don't know if I can go uh, back to back. This is always not great to do. Yeah. It has been done, but. We'll see. We'll get to it later. Yeah, and it won't be a birdie fest. You won't be shooting twenty three under like uh, like he did this week. Uh, no, of course, no. It will. Um, it will definitely tough. test test the short game, but it'll test every part of your of your game. We'll get into the course in a little bit here, guys. Um, yeah. Without further ado, uh, we got some special guests. Like I said, we got Mike M. He's gonna be jumping on here in just a little bit for you guys. He's from Rochester, so we can give you guys a little little insight about the golf course and give us some picks, little weather conditions as well. And then we got our guy. From uh, the past uh, big uh, majors, we always do, guys. Cam Stewart, he's going to be back in the building here on 7.30 p.m. Eastern. So we'll look forward to Cam's picks and what he's got to say for this year's PGA Championship. So, Connor, yeah. uh, this year I'll be uh, I'll be live at this event. I think I've been saying it about 30 times. Everyone knows. Friday, I'll actually be at this puppy. So it's uh, right in the backyard here. It's way up. Uh, it's in the States, but it might as well be in Canada. It's, um, it's yeah. right on the How are you getting there? When you get, How long will it take? You just so, driving uh, there? You taking a we're little? We're driving. Yeah, it's uh, it's about yeah. three three and a half hours to Syracuse, then about another forty five to Rochester. So it's about a four hour drive, depending on how it is at customs at the border. So yeah, uh, hopefully it's easy for you. I have not been to Rochester. I've been to Syracuse though. Have you? Uh, it's yeah, uh, right next door, pretty much. Yeah. So uh, yeah. It, it's pretty much it's right on Lake Ontario. The weather conditions are uh, not going to be too uh, nice compared to what these golfers are used to. So. Uh, we'll get into the weather in a little bit, guys. But yeah, Rochester, New York. This course is uh, a lot of redesigns have happened. This is an original Donald Ross. And Donald Ross, guys, he was a, just an architect from way back in the 1920s, even earlier. Uh, designed plenty of courses in North America. Uh, just a master around the green. But it was actually redesigned or just came in for some um, some changes by uh, Tom Fazio and George, his brother. And a lot of the the hate started to come on. This was after they, they shot uh, like 70... Uh, four rounds in the 60s they, they pretty much tore this course up so they wanted to make it a little easier and uh, they just kind of ruined the course there's a lot more trees that were in the way so the this course from 2019 on connor it was redesigned by a gentleman named andrew green guys andrew green thankfully andrew green came in he cut down almost 700 trees this course had over 3,000, if i'm not wrong here guys this was yeah, just look different it's typical yeah. where i am guys you're right in the forest it's uh there's not as much trees which makes it a lot more doable uh the worst thing you want is you're in the fairway you got some overhang from a tree so they've cut down a lot of trees but the architecture at this golf course guys it's pretty much like an old school scottish course kind of english style course course uh deep bunkers you got elevated greens crazy architecture and andrew green restored a lot of these greens so the greens are a lot more doable and uh this course guys it's going to be uh it's going to be a true beauty um this year oak hills yeah sloping greens with a redesign and it's also had a plenty of hosted events here connor the um, u.s opens there's been three pga championships guys there's been three uh there's a Ryder cup in 2000 and, or 1995 and the europeans actually won this event because uh, like i said it's more of a english style golf course if you ask me just from looking at it and it also had three senior championships as well so this golf course is definitely uh it's actually the top 25 in the world in golf digest as well guys um plenty to say about this golf course real quick how do you think it plays out then obviously with the u.s opens and those early pgas basically just par was good here uh, got, you know nicholas i remember in 80 was like the only guy under par he won um but last time it was played here with duffner what it was about 10 years ago in 13 
yeah, it was 10 under. He won it. What do you think here with what they've redone? Do you think we get lower scores? Tougher? Well, what do you think about it? I, I think the big thing here, guys, is the reason why it's actually being played here in May because the, they had a, a voter. The, the Rochester got this course way back in 2017. So before that, guys, the PGA usually is in, in um, August, and that's when this course yeah. pretty much would be at more of its peak. That's when it's been played. So it's it's rare you're ever going to see a course like this up in it's May. It's still pretty cold. Like you're going to get – uh, cold conditions here so it's um you, you're gonna you're gonna have to it's tough to say because it's gonna be completely different conditions i can see this as a golfer guys like i went out connor friday and it was a little bit a hum- little bit of humidity the ball literally will just hang in the air all your shots you got to adjust to playing with that humidity but when when you have that kind of colder air i'm telling you you better get some practice in because it's not going to be your irons aren't going to travel the same distance you have elevated greens if you throw some wind on there friday and saturday um it, it's going to be playing tougher the colder conditions definitely are going to are going to hinder some players i think connor so i'm saying final scores is going to be we'll be lucky I, I say maybe double digits maybe 10 12 under but i'll say eight under um winner okay. just because the short game there's going to be so many bogeys available at this course and um yeah there's some rain in the forecast too so um just the big change of it being in may i think it's not going to be you're not going to see as much run for the most part like you would see in uh in how August. about real quick for let's touch on the let's hit the weather real quick before let's you do get anything yeah so hit guys 63 uh, this was yesterday 63 this is all fahrenheit 63 on thursday sunny 68 friday but there's going to be winds 20 miles an hour and there could be rain late and then there could be up to five millimeters i had there too for rain friday night and then leading into saturday a little bit of rain as well so it's going to play softer even on saturday and friday um, and then Sunday, Connor, a high of 61 on Sunday. So that's uh, it's almost in the 50s, pretty much. Here, guys, it's going to be it's going to be on the colder side for a lot of these golfers. So, like I said, the ball is not going to be traveling as far as uh, a lot of these stats are indicating. I can just tell you that from just from golfing and yeah. what it's like here up in the Northeast. So um, the colder conditions, and then it's going to be wetter too. So you're not going to have as much roll. So a big stack, guys. This this year, in my opinion, is going to be. Um, carry distance you're going to need the carry distance at this golf course especially with that rain coming i think friday night um so carry distance we'll get into it a little bit more here with mike uh, but i think that's going to be very important Th- this is going to be a bent grass going to go over some more stats about this course for you guys we want to know everything we can about oak hill pure, pure bent grass uh typical for up north uh, majority of these are going to be long iron shots into this golf course you have a lot of longer par fours you only have two par fives connor but they're both over 600 yards so uh, these par fives are no easy slouch. And one of them is an uphill par five to 600 yards. You're not getting there in two, that's for sure. So uh, a lot of long irons, deep, deep bunkers. And that's in the fairway. That's around the greens. Several bunkers are just placed in strategic spots, but they're not just kind of like your Florida style. They're like more like your European style bunkers where they're just, they're, they're deep kind of pot. They're deep, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you can almost lose a stroke if, if you get in there. Um, like that's why it's hosted all these us open pgas Ryder cups it's it's a real tough course in that sense um and like i say here if irons aren't perfect you're going to have heavy pressure on your short game uh all four rounds it's going to be a battle so you're going to have to have your irons pretty dialed in like i said the the weather conditions you're gonna have to adjust on the fly too so that's just some some stuff about the golf course there guys um some other things some stats i want you guys to focus on um, in my opinion one putts connor you need one putt from five to ten feet at this golf course i know they've had a redesign to make the greens a little easier but those five to teners on bent grass that's that's where you're going to make your money because i can tell you even from that that's the real test it's not the 20 footers you can get those 20 footers you know almost tap in range it's good and when it's when you don't have those little tap ins from you know five feet in those five to ten are going to be important here guys driving distance and accuracy which equals total driving Total driving, very important here. Around the greens, scrambling um, from the rough, from the bunkers. Those are another stats you're going to want to look at. Approach from over 200 yards and um, and total um, putts, I think, are going to be important at this golf course, Connor. Yeah, I agree. As we say, uh, you know, 10, you know, 10 five-footers, the knee knockers, uh, you got to drop. Yeah, and these green complexes, guys, you have elevated greens. You have some of them that are triangle greens, Connor. I haven't seen many triangle greens, so pretty much it just narrows as the hole goes on. So if you're going long on some of these holes, you're done. If that pins at the top of the triangle, you're, you're going to have a real tough time trying to come back because it's it just slopes down, kind of like a typical Donald Ross design. So 
Um, yeah, the, the short game is going to be at a, a big test here. Wouldn't be surprised if Terrell Hatton um, loses his cool at least one of these rounds. It's uh, bound to happen <laughs> at this course if he's not in the bunker or the, on, the, on the putting green. But uh, Terrell Hatton, yeah, good old angry, uh, angry Irishman. Or Englishman, Irishman. Englishman. Uh, Englishman. I got all this green coming across here. Uh, but yeah, one more thing I want to talk about, guys. Some uh, natives of New York here. There's only three of them. The big name here, you guys will all know it, Cameron Young. Uh, he's from, I believe, the New York area, uh, like New York City area around there. So uh, he's a big, um, the big name here. He's going to have a lot of family up here. He's used to this cold weather. We'll get into Cameron Young here in a little bit. Brandon Wu is another name. He's from around that uh, New York City area. But then the one local... He made it in here, guys. Alex Smalley. I did not know this, but Alex Smalley, guys, he's from Rochester, New York. It uh, looks like an accountant. I believe he might actually be an accountant. Uh, but Alex Smalley, he's going to be the local here um, at this event. And uh, some more information for you guys. Sung JM, Connor, he won the Korean uh, championship or something like that. He was over in Korea, guys. He literally said, screw the PGA for this week. Went over to Korea, won the championship there last night. And now he's flying back to... Um, to New York uh, Monday morning for the P for yeah. the PGA championship. That's just typical Sung JM. So I don't know if it's going to affect him, but uh, Sung J, you know, his, uh, his mileage, Oh, his travel mileage just must be through the roof. Like the amount of points that guy must have Connor. Oh my God. Like he's, sitting yeah, first he, uh, but he's young, but they're like those guys. That's all they do. I mean, if they're yeah. not playing, they're practicing. You that's know, right. Machine type guy. Thomas Dietrich, too. He finished, I believe, fifth place. He was in a European event. He's going to be traveling over from Europe. Uh, we'll get into both of those golfers in just a second. But before we go on to more about the course and some golfers we like here, let's bring on our first guest. Uh, this guy is right out of Rochester, New York, uh, Mr. Mike M. What's going on, Mikey? How you doing, brother? Mike. Hey, boys. What's going on today? Happy, hey. uh, happy Sunday pre-PGA Championship to everybody. I'm excited to be here and share some golf ideas. Let's yeah, go. Thanks. Glad to have you on. Happy Mother's Day too, to everyone out there that's watching too. Uh, this is a Monday or a Sunday awesome. recording, so uh, shout out to all the mothers out there. Uh, yeah, Mike, this is a great course right in your backyard. What do you think of uh, the redesign so far? So, you know, it's exciting. The, the last Oak, Oak Hill is uh, clearly a prestigious course, um, you know, internationally recognized. Uh, locally, they, there's just a ton of marquee high-end events for a lot of the big business in the area that come into town. And it's something to say the last three years that they've been going through the massive reconstruction that they have. And I say massive, I mean, you know, earth moving, you know, massive machinery, all, all over the greens, fairways, yeah. the tree work that went on three years ago. I heard you guys kind of tee it up on the onset. It's really is, is unbelievable. I mean, some yeah. of these trees were, were literally, you know, hundreds of years old that they just had to take out of the equation. And mm -hmm. uh, I think what it's going to do is it's going to make it, um, you know, they talk about restoring it. I think it's going to make it an interesting course now Then you guys mentioned that they've held a number of major championships here and they're on their way to being, uh, I think, the second most hosted PGA championship course. Um, but it's going to create a whole new look and feel. And I think the angles that these players are going to have now coming in, you mentioned the par fives that have gotten lengthened um, and the greens themselves. They've switched to a full bent grass setup. Uh, yeah. Green complexes have been completely restored, and that's kind of a cool process if you've never seen it. So they've dragged it on over the last three or four years. They're clearly getting paid by the hour to do that job. But, um, you know, all being said and done, uh, really cool, really exciting, and it's been a, a great talk into the town about uh, the championship coming in. Everyone's been talking about it for the last three-plus years, even since the last championship. So it's exciting. Everyone's excited in town. We're just coming off our big Lilac Festival that uh, really takes place this time of year as well. So – uh, music, fun, food, drinks, artsy types of things coming into town. So it's a great time to um, come into Rochester right. and see what we have All right. Well, I guess I'll have to have the link up there Friday. Show me the town there and uh, hook up with all these uh, these pretty lilac women you, you talk about here. I uh, look forward to, to checking out Rochester um, down in, uh, in Mikey M's territory there. Maybe I could just swim over the Lake Ontario because it's, uh, it's literally that close. Uh, but yeah, this golf course, guys, like he said, it, it's just, it's got so much history to it. Um, the fact it's in May too, and it, it's pretty rare we're going to see this in May. Usually the PGA is held in uh, in August in the past. So, and then that's when they got the vote was in, was in August, but with the change now it's in May. Um, just one thing, uh, Mike, um, about this course, uh, going to it right away, I, I have to look at, like I was talking to, to CMAC guys, around the green is just going to be, it's going to be huge here. Um, we are going to be seeing some wind. I want to talk about the weather too, uh, Mike. The weather on Friday I have here 
there's going to be some late rain and there's going to be some wind, like a storm obviously coming in. We're going to see some wind pick up. And then Saturday, it's going to be playing a little wetter, only 63 Fahrenheit. So um, they're not going to have much roll. The, the air is not going to be nearly as, uh, there's not going to be humidity, humidity in the air. So um, how do you think the, the ball, how do you think the, the golfers are going to have to navigate this course? What do you think is going to be key? So, you know, as a guy that's played Oak Hill before, I can say that the, um, Oh, here we go. The, the, here we go. The bunkers and, and how things have looked, um, you know, pre the redesign. And, and now, I, I mean, some of the thoughts that I had were um, Scottish type, you know, bunkers when it comes to getting out of these bunkers and really deep, really steep, um, yeah. aggressive angles that you're going to have to take to get out of there. And then, and then you're going to have to stop that thing on a dime when you get on top of those peak sloping greens. So it's it going to be a stroke. Be, you know, it's yeah. A stroke you know, and so the, Absolutely. The weather side of things is a nice 63 on Thursday. Uh, this is kind of kind of some of the recent. So obviously it'll change in Western New York by by the hour. But Friday should be a nice 80 degree day early on. And I think you're going to see two types of um, playing environments as that afternoon, the second group comes in. So the guys that tee off in the morning on Thursday are going to face a little bit more of a challenge, I think, come Friday with some of that weather kind of changing things up a little bit. Yeah. And then I believe yeah. when the cut takes place and moving into this weekend is where you're going to really start to see it become a championship course. We've seen a lot of championship numbers between, you know, minus six, minus 12, even some minus 18s. I like the number that you guys threw out there around minus nine or 10. And I think that's going to come into play, um, particularly when it comes time to the cut. Saturday, we're seeing 64 and rainy. So that's kind of yeah. our typical may weather now they did a s extensive um drainage redesign as well so uh the course should drain a lot better than it mm -hmm. did um you know as far as uh sand traps and, and such are concerned they, they really spent time making sure that they're not waterlogged um mm -hmm. traps and they put some real state-of-the-art um drainage you know focus around the course in itself because the last time they had the championship here there definitely were a couple wet days and then it just kind of created standing standing water and just kind of miserable um you know, opportunity for not just the players, but the fans alike. So they're trying to really focus in on keeping it clean, keeping it moving and making sure they get each, each tournament, each day of the tournament in as it's scheduled. Yeah, absolutely. C-Mac, uh, what do you got to say about the course so far? You got any, uh, any golfers here you're looking at, or what do you got to say? No, since we have Mike here. Uh, yes, I do have golfers, obviously, but let's get to him. Screw all this, uh, the fucking uh, yeah. weather, rain, all the bullshit talk course. What do we like here, Mike? Who are you uh, looking at here? Speaking. Yeah, so uh, so I kind of did a quick rundown of, of um, you know, some of the players that jumped off the card to me. I'll tell you from a golfing perspective, you know, I'll take a step back and say I listen to you guys for a lot of my golfing insight when it comes to my first round leaders, my top 10 parlays that I throw together. And you guys just do a terrific job. So excited to be here and share some of my thoughts around it. Um, what I've seen is, you know, in terms of golf right now, could you imagine a better situation between the live and the PGA tour and kind of some of those hostilities that have created within. So, you know, guys that aren't even scheduled to make the, um, the first three days of interviewing from the live tour are just getting completely slighted outright. So, um, you know, from that perspective, real exciting kind of uh, dynamic that it creates within. So I kind of approached it from that perspective and said, who's got the most approved. First and foremost, I, I, I do have a, a, an open parlay that I put together with a couple of future championships. And John Rahm was one of the guys that um, made that for me. He's going to make my cut as well for um, players that I'm going to play. Clearly chalk in, in the favorite, but it's chalk at plus 750. So let's be honest, it's still a nice hit if he comes in and, and gets it done for us. He's number one in the world. You know, he's going for his third major, his second this season. And he's got four outright wins in his last 11. So I was excited about a John Rahm spot. I like John Rahm for the top three as well at a plus 180 number that I saw. And I'm going to piggyback off of John Rahm, and I'm going to kind of go just a touch out of order with Finau. I like Tony Finau as a guy that beat Rahm in Mexico, uh, you know, from a perspective of, you know, world stack and ranking. This guy finished 30th last year at the PGA Championship. And while the course is different, we see that the style of the PGA Championship is a lot different than obviously the Masters, the British, and so on. You know, I think from a uh, Finau perspective, he's eighth currently ranked in the world out of the sand. And I think that's going to be a factor. There's 78 bunkers now that are kind of correlated to this golf course. Um, and again, we talked about the strokes penalties out of there. So I was looking for a Finau guy kind of coming off hot who feels like he's always on the fringe of finding a way to get it done. So I looked at Finau. At a plus 2,500 and a top 10 at plus 260. Another guy that I got two more guys that I really like. And then I got kind of one that's going to make a fringe for me as well. Rory McIlroy. Uh, for those that don't know, Rory ended up with himself a little mate here out of Rochester, New York. 
And mm -hmm. when Rory's coming to town or when he's in between tour events, he comes to town. So uh, Oak Hill Country Club is, um, I don't know that this is official, you know, kind of second track, if you will, but, you know, he's definitely a guy that gets, you know, perks and privileges when he comes to town. He's working out all the time when he's here visiting the uh, wife's family. So um, I think in terms of a guy that's kind of got that hometown feel and something to, to prove himself, he is kind of the face of the PGA. You know, him versus these live golfers, for me, it seems like he's kind of got that advantage and that opportunity. Hasn't won since last October, um, you know, but he's number three in the world. He's got two uh, PGA championships already. He finished eighth last year in the PGA championship. So give me uh, Rory at plus 1,200. And again, a top 10 finish at plus 140. I went to Cantley as a guy that I like here who made a big change this year. He's got six top 10 finishes. He missed a cut last year, uh, but he made a big uh, caddy switch. And he's got LaCava on the bag now, right? So, yeah. you know, here's a guy that finished – um, second uh, overall in, in the championship or the opportunities previous year, tied for 21st, I should say, with the second chance now with, with, with LeCava on the back. So he's not making his debut with LeCava. He's going into his second tournament. And we know LeCava is a guy that's got the experience to help kind of get it done and navigate um, greens, fairways, bunkers, and, and uh, just kind of knows the ins and outs of how to be uh, a championship caddy. Last guy that I looked at was DJ. Uh, Dustin Johnson's one of my favorite players on the, on uh, the golfing planet. Not so much. Well for his right golf. Now. He's playing well his right golf. now. Is, you know, it's, it's more that I respect him for his off the uh, golf course accolades um, for yeah. both how he likes to spend his time and who he likes to spend his time with. So DJ has got a special place in my heart and uh, you know, coming off a big weekend in the live golf tour uh, finished top 50 in the majors and the masters, you know, so here's a guy that, um, kind of has a little egg on his face from that showing with that whole live first time guys are in the championships, um, you know, masters, if you will. And, and getting that 50 doesn't feel good for him. So I think he finished 48 was the exact number. I like DJ at a plus 2,500. His top 10 is plus 260. Uh, guys coming in hot face of live golf right now. He's looking good when he's out there on that live event himself. And yeah, he's going to have to put long pants on, but I think he'll make be able to navigate it just fine. So a couple of guys that I really like there from the breakdown. Uh, well said. Well said, Mike. Uh, just to piggyback on some of your picks there, um, I, I agree with all heavy hitters you're going with there. Uh, tough course, you're going to need him for four rounds. But one thing with John Rom, guys, uh, looking up his stats, he's surprisingly scrambling from the rough, 201st. He's he's actually one of the worst. He's I think he is dead last almost in scrambling from the rough. Everything else, key stats I'm looking at here, guys, are in pretty much the top 50. Um, and then one other thing about Rory McIlroy, I actually found information that he actually is a, a member too. Uh, he's got membership at Oak Hill. So he plays this course plenty of, of time mm -hmm. when he's down to see his girlfriend there, wife, Erica, uh, didn't actually know that's where they were from, but I found out, yeah, he plays this course a lot guys. And what did he do when he was in Canada? This is a very similar track. When I look at it, like it's St. George's, um, the one they played last year as well. It's uh, slipped my mind. But he won both of those guys. He's the back-to-back -back winner at the Canadian Open. And this is a very similar track. It's a European style, like I said, off the top. So Rory does have a lot of um, motivation, too, after missing the cut from the Masters. Uh, what I'm going to do, guys, just get this out of the way early. I'm taking a matchup bet. I will we'll be taking. I'm looking for it now. Rory McIlroy over Scotty Scheffler. Scotty coming nice. off this uh, this tournament. Um, also, Scotty up north here. I, Canadian Open, it's just it's much different track for him. His putting isn't as strong in bent grass as well. And, um, yeah, I just think Rory's going to be just right dialed in there uh, for this tournament. And then Dustin Johnson, guys, if you don't know right now, he's in, like, a tie, I believe, with Cameron Smith, who shot, like, nine under today. Uh, I'll get to Cam Smith in a bit. I'm a big fan of Cam Smith this week. Uh, they're tied 16 under apiece. A lot of these live golfers, guys, that are playing in this tournament this week, they're going real low. They're, it's a real track they're just kind of prepping for. And a lot of these big names, even DeChambeau, he was 12 under, only four back of the leaders as well. So he's another golfer that's playing well. And then some course comparisons I didn't get to um, uh, before I throw it to Connor there. Uh, Wingfoot guys, Wingfoot. Uh, this is a great comparison in my opinion. This was played in New York as well. U S open 2020 who won that D Bambo, AKA D Shambo uh, shot six under, and it was a par 77,392 yards, the same type of track this is going to be. So um, look for Wingfoot, uh, even Olympia fields in Illinois, uh, Firestone Country Club, which used to host the WGC Bridgestone Invitational, and um, even the Rocket Mortgage. All those courses are good course comparisons uh, for you guys to look at going forward. Uh, Connor, what do you got for yeah. us uh, before we throw Mikey? Uh, before uh, we get to bring our next guest in, and uh, and um, yeah. yeah, let's touch on uh, 
Mike Skies here. John Rahm, obviously. Uh, yeah, this guy is the best golfer in the world, I think. Him and Scotty Scheffler. You guys know that. Off the Masters win. Go get it. Um, the guy here is Rory because he was a fave for me at the Masters. He misses the cut. We talked about it. Um, and I do like him here. I, you know, I don't love 12 to 1, but I think the pressure's off. He loves this place you guys talked about. Uh, I think he comes out with the Masters. He's still looking for the slam there. Everything's just, it's going to every year going to be just, you know, tight for him. Every time they're going to talk about it, he's going to go there and maybe he gets it done, you know, in the next 10 years. Uh, we will see. But so, yeah, I think he's free flown. He likes it here. And even when it was played 10 years ago when he was young, um, you know, he had top 10 here. You mentioned I was a member here. Yeah. So I don't mind Rory um, at all uh, at the 12 to 1. And what, just one thing to piggyback off that. So what happened at the uh, just at the up north here at the U.S. Open when Fitzpatrick, he played this course, actually won it uh, back in 2013, I believe it was, at the USAM. He ended up winning it 10 years later. So um, Rory McIlroy. Uh, he's, uh, could be, could be knocking on the door. Good odds at 12 to one. Uh, Mikey, uh, Mikey, M, you want to go over your picks just one more time for everyone in the, uh, in the chat yeah. and all of our viewers there before, uh, we, we, uh, bring on our next guest. Sure. Will. so again, I appreciate the opportunity guys. And I'm sharing, yeah, a little chalky yeah. here, but I think with the course redesigns and, um, the, the opportunity for the players, it's going to be experience that shines through in this one. Although I think it's cool the way the PGA brings in, uh, former golf pros and golf pros alike to kind of compete and run this thing out. Uh, I do think it's going to be an opportunity for experience. I've got John Rahm as an outright. I do have a John Rahm top three was plus 180. Um, I've got Rory McIlroy at 1200, top 10 plus 140. Cantley at plus 2200, top 10 at plus 200. Finau is my plus 2500, 25 to one. His top 10 is plus 260. And then DJ from the old live tour with his long yeah. pants at 25 to one plus 2500 and a top 10 plus 260. Beauty. I love it. Love the plays, Mikey. Thanks again for uh, jumping on with us. It's a treat. We'll get you on again for the next big event we do. Uh, your insight is, uh, I think, the coppers and everyone in the in the chat there are going to want to hear from you again. So hopefully we can get you back on, Mikey. Be good, and hopefully you cash some tickets, brother. Cheers. Appreciate it, guys. Good luck. Cheers. Be good. All righty, guys. That was uh, Mikey M. Uh, breaking down his golf picks there right from Rochester, on uh, Rochester, Ontario. Rochester, New York. Uh, we're going to bring on our next guest here. Uh, he's always been on with us in the past uh, to treat. Uh, I like to call him one of our, our good friends in the industry here, uh, right out of uh, Mississauga, Ontario. Um, this is our uh, our expert here. He's from uh, Toronto. What's going on, Cam Stewart? How you doing, my guy? Uh, Goldster. Hey, I've been better. I, I've oh, been. what's going on? <laughs> what's going on, Cam? Talk to us. Talk to us. No, no, just just the picks. Just life in general. I'm not doing too good, but you know, what are you going to do? See you, Cam. Uh, oh. Met him again live. Got close. Adam mm. Scott, I had uh, this week close. Had Jason Day the previous week. He wins. Mm. You oh. guys know how it goes. Yeah. It's, I'm a lemon. <laughs> and our <laughs> Leafs just got tough, uh, just destroyed. You know, who scored the goal there, Cam? Nick Cousins. Guy I grew up with here in my yeah. backyard. Just to kick us in the teeth, Every so. day. Nick Paul, it's Mississauga, yeah. Perheggie, Toronto, you name it. Anyway, yeah. whatever. I don't want to talk about the Leafs. Yeah, anymore. let's you talk. Saw, you saw my path. tweets. I was drunk, and I I, <laughs> I have a lot of things I want to say, but I'm not going to say them. So let's okay. just talk about golf. Let, let's do it, Cam. Thank you so much, brother, for jumping on there. Uh, guys, Cam Stewart, uh, if you don't already know, he's also on Sports Grid. Check him out there on Sports Grid. And uh, we love having him on every uh, chance we can get. Cam, let's talk about some golf uh, Some golf picks you got this week. What do you think of this track so far? It's a par 70, 7,400 yards pretty much. So mm -hmm. this this could be a par 72 for most, most tracks, but we're playing a par 70, and those par 5s are over 600 yards. Yeah, I, I, I agree with your other guests. The thing is, John Rahm is a guy you can take all the time, right? And he, he can win yeah. this tournament. I know, Connor, you like Rory McIlroy. I'm not betting him, but this is a perfect track for him. He's just yeah. going to smash it all over the place, you know? He can eat up these car like courses. And the thing is, they cut down some of the trees. Yeah. So he's going to have ways to get out of danger and get some easy birdies. But I'm watching Tyrell Hatton and the way he's playing, and I'm looking at his odds at 55 to 1, and they got me very interested the way oh, he's boy. been playing lately. I also love Wyndham Clark at 80 to 1. Maybe he can go do it again. Like, I'm looking at guys, okay. Keegan Bradley hits it a mile. He's 70 to 1. Taking uh, a different yeah. approach this week, I think some of those 80 to 100 to 1 guys actually have a chance. And 
I had Wyndham Clark that week, and we've been betting him before. This guy murders Ooh. the golf ball. So if his putter's going well, yeah, I think he could beat it. Sorry, go, am I hearing myself twice, or is or you guys sound good? Uh, sounds good, on my, oh, okay, sounds good. good on my end there. Yeah, everything sounds okay. good there, Cam. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I uh, I couldn't agree uh, more on uh, Wyndham Clark. Yep. Uh, he's uh, he's definitely going to be in my in my picks here. I'll get to some of my picks here in just a sec. Actually, you know what? Why don't I get to right now? Screw it. Uh, here's one, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, here's one of my plays right here, Cam. I'm on uh, Wyndham Clark to win this thing. You know what? Where's he from? He's from Denver, Colorado. What's the weather going to be like? It's going to be freaking cold. And he bombs this tee. He bombs it like no other guys. His carry distance, surprisingly, I bet you didn't know, he's sixth on the tour, guys, in carry distance. So he's going to be able to carry it past some of these dog legs. He's going to have shorter irons coming in, even if he's in the rough. Uh, Greens in regulation, Cam, and uh, Connor from 175 to 200. 38th scrambling from the sand 40th from the rough 69th bogey avoidance he's 20th um 49th in putts per round 56th and final scoring average that's another thing i want to bring up here's final scoring average because i don't want a golfer that's ranked you know 170th in the final round but he can show up for the first three wyndham clark guys at 80 to 1 and he just came off came off that big win that cam had at the wells fargo you know what i'm taking a stab with our guy wyndham clark here uh for all those reasons and uh, what else do I have about Wyndham Clark here? Uh, yeah, he didn't play at the PGA, but I think he has a chance to win this, guys. I got his odds at uh, 82 to 1. My apologies, 82 to 1. And I have him uh, a top 10. Uh, Wyndham Clark here. Yeah. Sorry, top, top 20 plus 280 cam. And then I have the first round leader, 70 to 1. Love it. I, I, yeah, he's got a spot. He always goes low. The thing I equate him to is I'm not going to compare him to Scotty Scheffler. That's not. But remember Scheffler, he's close. He was close, and then he broke through. Yes, Ken. I see him as a Scotty Scheffler Jr. Not as successful, but in contention more that he's got that win. He's on the Colorado he, diet, whereas Scheffler's on the Texas diet. Yeah, I don't know. Like Wyndham Clark's a good golfer. Like, and the thing is, they give him odds like he's some kind of schlep. The guy's good. Like he can yeah. play, and when he puts. You know, and he won by multiple strokes on Sunday. He didn't give up. He was just like, okay, pedal to the metal. Let's go. Keegan Bradley's a guy. I'm not sure if he could close the door, but I think he fits the bill for this course. And Connor, I just like, I know it's Rory, but I'd rather have guys who are like Rory, but get 50 or 60 more on the bet, like a 70 to one, an 80 to one. Like you're going to give me more, a better number for that guy. But I really believe he'll do well. Because yeah, I'm not betting it. That's my oh, yeah. bet. I just, you, you know me, I'm not yeah. taking anyone <laughs> under 20 to one. No way. I just think okay. he's the guy, the place, everything kind of just fits like we were talking about. Uh, yep. for my, yeah, I'm definitely not, uh, I will not take Rory at 12 to one, but I love the, uh, I like the look. I like Keegan Bradley as well. His golf yeah. game this year keeps going. The, it's closed the door though, Ken, like you just mentioned. It's like maybe just put a few bucks on the win. What about Justin out there? Thomas? Out of the Jake, chalk. Uh, see, he... yeah, yeah, I like his scrambling from the sand. His greens and rag are a little subpar here. I, bogey avoidance, he's been subpar too. You know what, Cam? I'm not going to – I can't trust him. I really can't. He, he can't make a putt from like 10 to 20 feet. He can make them when they're tapping. It's like good for you, Justin. But uh, I, I can't, tr I can't yeah. trust JT. If anything, Keegan Bradley, it's just his damn putter. If he can just make these little putts because – He's definitely um, – he's played a lot up north here, and he's used to these uh, these greens. He's from Vermont, so he shouldn't have any problems with what, these weather. With Cam Young's weather. from Rochester, is he not? Yeah. No, oh, he's, he, from, he's from just he's out, from New York. He's right yeah. out of New York. I think Scarborough, New York, actually, Cam. Scarborough, okay. New York. The guy from <laughs> – Is Rochester. that the murder capital of New York? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know what? Next to Young. Scarborough <laughs> Town Center. Getting a little stabby. <laughs> Anyway. So he's gonna, he's gonna be there. Same with uh, Brandon Wu. Brandon yes. Wu's from around there. But the guy from right. Rochester, yeah. Alex Smalley, Cam. Alex Smalley is oh. actually a local from Rochester. So he's the uh, the local content uh, they're gonna have there. But yeah, Cam Young. I don't know what to do. I with need Cam better Young. odds. It's I know. Cam, like honestly, like I've been waiting to bet this guy just from this course. But the more I'm looking into Cam Young, guys, his scrambling from the sand, 165th from the rough, 197th bogey avoidance, 124th. I think this course is not like as much as he's from up north and everything. I don't know if it's he's going to have to have a short game dialed in, and I don't think that's Cam Young's type of game. These are elevated greens. You have pot style bunkers. You're going to have awkward lies around the green, and um, yeah, I just the also another thing these green sizes, guys, 4,500 square feet average. Uh, that's that's on the smaller side to say the least. So you're going to have smaller greens. They're going to be just really hard to hit this week. So. 
I don't know about Cam Young just around the green. That's my only Shoffley. issue. Shoffley? Ding, 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 ding. That's the one right there, Cam. I, I can't help it. I just, I can't help it. The only well, thing with me. This is the problem, Dogster. If you get off the guy, he wins. Like me and Jason Day. I'm, the only reason I didn't bet him because it was 19 to 1. I'm like, I want 28 30. And then he wins. That's yeah. the thing. You know? That's the if thing. he wins here and I don't have him, that I because I, I'm so much in majors, it would drive me crazy too. That's what I'm know? saying, C Mac. We got to bet all these guys. That's the problem with golf <laughs> betting. It's a problem. Oh, you can't get off guys. Look it's at Alexander, nuts. second at the Wells Fargo, fourth yep. at the Zurich, fourth at the Heritage. Like he, if anyone's knocking on the door, like quite like like with Big two time. hands, it, it, it's Alexander. And the only thing I have against him uh, would be is going to be the cold weather. That's the only thing. Cam, I was staying off the top. When you're playing up here, when it's colder, the the humidity's not there. The ball won't travel. And I know Alexander. He doesn't play that much up here in Canada. He doesn't come to the Canadian It's not Open. that cold. It's freaking eighty degrees out here today. It, it's nice. It's hold, a on, hold on, hold on. Let's wait, go wait, back. You think we're playing in in, in Yellowknife in the Arctic? Come it's going to be cold. <laughs> it's in New York State. I'm, I'm pulling a timeout here. Are it's you gonna, time out. It's going to be 63 on That's Thursday. Fine. That's it's, six, 17 degrees. What's wrong with six, that? 61 on Sunday, too. That's not bad. But That's, for these guys in what California. What is that? 16? 15? That's what right, around bro. here. So I got Fahrenheit in here on my stupid machine on the side. It's not that cold. 76 in here now. It's boiling. Yeah, okay. It's off. Yeah, you know what? I hear you there, Cam. I hear you. It is on the warmer side for us, but just that he's from San Diego. Like, all right. Anyways, anyways, I'll just say it like that. Maybe it isn't a big factor. Okay, no, just do something for me, Gokster, since you got your uh, models and stuff here. You're like the sports grid computer. I don't know what the hell's going on. So, has you can't tell me he's not won in a tournament that wasn't hot or, or played well where it wasn't hot? Come on. Well, I'm just saying it's going to be like in the morning too, Cam. Like that morning wave Thursday, uh, it's going to be four or five degrees, like at seven, eight in the morning. It's early time right now. But it's going to be that's where it like, only might work out because sixties are fine, I think. It, it's yeah. going to warm yeah. up. The worst, the, the, the time you want, this is a big thing for the, the, the waves, guys. PM, AM wave, in my opinion, because yeah. there's going to be rain late on Friday and it's going to be a lot warmer on Friday morning than it's going to be Thursday morning. So, yeah. um, just something to just something to say, Cam. I just you know I uh, just I just your nuts, folks. It's just one of those things. That, what do you think? I'm frustrated. Like I've, I've <laughs> I the Leafs went out. I've lost a lot of money. All the Wyndham Clark monies are gone because I can't hit a winner in hockey. Like I'm losing my mind right now. Like so here we it. go. I'm gonna read out some stats for us just really quickly about Xander. So he's okay. 19th scrambling from the sand. He's 31st greens and regulation from 175 to 200. Key stat: 72nd carry distance. 12th in bogey avoidance camp, 34th in putting, and uh, final score average, he's 18th uh, on, on tour. So he's going to be there. It's just as he's going to close the door. So you know what? I found odds, guys, at 24 to 1 on our guy, Xander, uh, the X-Man. I, I'm going to have to play him. You know what? I'm, I'm not going to give him a hard time if he's playing bad Friday, but you know what? Actually, that's a lie. I'm going to give him a hard time Friday if he's playing yeah. bad. So, see, I knew I shouldn't have took you, Xander. I knew it. Anyway. Uh, Connor, who's so your chalk? 24 to 1, Xander. Like somebody under 35, for instance. I see Xander or Cantley would own my only two moves. And I just, we talked before you got on, or yeah. it was Jason Day. He just won. I mean, just the back to back. People have done it, but um, man, but I like how he played. My so guy, it's the, the problem is, so I'll be on, I think, one of those two is the Grand Slam. We talked about Rory. There's the pressure. I, I just think his short game works here is Jordan Spieth at over 30 to 1. Uh, if you get a price like that, I just – that's rest. the only thing. But I think everything else, I like how his game's been. Um, obviously, I had him and Fitzpatrick a few weeks ago. Um, that was real solid. I think it just – as long as you get over 30 to 1, I, hey, I, Goldster, I think I got to take him here. You work for the Weather Network now, obviously. You're telling me about everybody. So how does Patrick Canley play in the heat? Yeah, he went to UCLA. <laughs> Did he not? Yeah, it's cold mornings in the uh, I can in Ireland. He can bundle up might, and Cantley play might have it. an actual pair of winter mitts on. He might actually have to take off the winter <laughs> mitts after every single shot. I'm not lying to you. Cantley's probably going to have two, three layers on, and he's going to have splash pants like you think he's going to hit the slopes. So, Cantley, I don't know <laughs> he used how to he's play in the winter. It. Like it's but, just yeah. like, get a grip. You like Hovland then? 
Your oh. call, your goal, is that where you're going with, Ghoster? No, yeah. So so here we go. All right, all right let's get back here. Let's Rip get back. One. Yeah, okay. So so yeah. Hovland and Morikawa, two ball strikers that you know what you think. Why Hovland's would you dead them? to me. You know what? Yeah. Same with me, Cam. I can't <laughs> take these guys that have absolutely no goddamn short game. And both of these two guys, at some point in time, they're going to just bite you right in the rear end when you least expect it. And I'll tell you right now, Colin Morikawa, uh, let me read off some stats for you guys. 203rd from 5 to 10 feet, Cam. The yeah, guy can't it, make man. a putt if it's up for par. Like, he, he's 146 in putts per round, uh, scrambling from the sand subpar. He has no carry distance, which I think is not a good thing. It's not going to help you here. You want carry distance. So I'm off Morikawa. And then Hovland's the same thing. He's got carry distance. He can get you to the dance, but something's going to happen. Uh, you when you guys see this European tour? Three Swedes and a Dane in the top four? Like, how do you pick three Swedes? I had Alexander Bjork last week. He almost went. And Torborn <laughs> Olison. He was like lingering. I had a bit on Dietrich. He was there. And he oh, yeah. You and yeah, Gia? There, yeah, but... Dietrich. Yeah, yeah I heard Jeff's tweet. Dietrich. He's disappointed. Yeah, Bad he's round, too. Dietrich. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've left, I left it off. I got some more plays here. Yeah. Uh, who do we got here? Xander. I got some more chalk here. You know what? Tony Baloney, Tony Fino. This guy oh. plays ball. He, I'd he rather have Fino over Hovland and Young yep. or any of those guys. Yeah. How many I, times I, I, has he won, right? How many times has he won? He's won several times now. It hasn't been a major yet. He hasn't got that big major win, but he's won. A, he beat John Rahm, like uh, Mike M was saying, at the Mexico Open. Uh, 23rd at the Wells Fargo. He plays well up here. He's from Utah. No issue with the conditions, in my opinion. I'm always going to bring he's up the He's good. He's good. Yeah, he's, nice. you're damn right he's good. 27th in greens and regulation, 16th from the sand, 84th from the rough, 10th in bogey avoidance. Uh, the only issue would be just him missing some just little testers. He's 98th in little testers. But uh, you know what? I'm going to take Tony Fino. He's been knocking on the door. Came also third in the Canadian Open, which I think is a similar track cam up in St. George's. Um, he's got plenty of experience. Give me uh, Tony Fino, guys, 29 to 1. I like Tony Put Fino. Put in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, and yeah, hey, thanks, Ghoster. It's, it's not usually my line, but um, yeah, no, I like the thing is, Finau's one. Hovlin yes. gags in the final round. Even when you got him for a top 20, like you see, oh, the old 76 on Sunday. You're like, thanks, Victor. Really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, like I, I can't handle that. I need guys who have won or guys who have been real close all the time, like your boy Shoffle. But uh, I'm, yeah. take, I'm taking bombs this week. Wyndham Clark, um, Hatton. Oh, and yeah. uh, as I mentioned before, Keegan Bradley. I can't believe I'm betting this guy. More top <laughs> 10 20. Keegan. Matchup. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't mind that Keegan play as well. So you got so far Keegan, you got Terrell Hatton, and you got um, Wyndham Clark. Wyndham Clark. Yeah. Wyndham Clark. We're with Wyndham Clark, the same ones there. All right. Um, Connor, are, you haven't yeah. uh, brought, any, brought up any picks yet there, my friend. Let's hear some action you got. I want to hear who you have. I'm interested. Uh, I have. Um, I told you, I just don't know how I'm going to bet it yet. <laughs> but it. I like speed is a guy I'm going to look at. These are right. guys I'm going to bet top 10 or 20. I just got to lock it in. It's Sunday. We're, uh, we're a little right. early yeah. here. Um, see Wu Kim. I think you can do well here. Top 10. We mentioned Bradley. I had that written down. Adam Scott. I know he just, I like Adam Scott too. He, like yeah. Well. He plays this course. Well, I like his, how his game's been the last month or so. He's played great golf. I think a top 10, 20 with him is like a must. So I've already put that in. Then I'm going to bet it. Maybe put a little. I don't know if he can win, you know, but maybe at his age he could sneak one, you know, but in this field I'm not so sure. Uh, but those are a few guys I've already had written down uh, from earlier. I like it. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, I hear you there. One thing about Spieth, I heard it. It's the left right. He's got a wrist injury. And as a golfer with that left wrist, wrist injury as a righty, it, you have no follow through with that short game. Like I'm just, I'm just telling you from just experience with golf guys, like, He's going to have – he, he just doesn't feel if – if his feel's not there, he's done. Like, like I'm telling you right now, he might not make the cut. But uh, Spieth, he's yeah, a guy – he, he's a guy, though, looking at this course, Connor, at the start, right when I was doing my research I'm, like two months ago, he's a guy I wanted to take. I thought this is a guy who's going to kill the short game. You need the short game. He's got distance now off the tee. I wanted to take uh, Spieth, but with this injury, I had to put him on the burner. Yeah. So uh, Yeah, I get it. And the big numbers always in the back with him. You know, like the, the big uh, triple – yeah. You know, or something like that he can have on a hole. Uh, there's some like if you could get over 45 to one, you know, can a guy like Sam Burns come through this week? There's a few that like I've been I'm looking at if I can get I'd like over 50 to one. But I, I think that could uh, sneak up. Uh, I like that price. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, to one. 
You guys talk about Sam Burns? Yeah. Yeah, love Sam Burns this week. I got him 47 Ooh, nice. to 1 here. Uh, I, I just I, I have to take Sam Burns here. Uh, his putting, he's got one of the hottest putters. I, people don't talk about how good of a putter this guy is. And he's actually That's really true. strong on, on, on bent grass. Uh, I did some research here, guys, and some course comparisons I had, Cam. Wingfoot, Olympia Fields, Firestone, uh, and the Rocket Mortgage, which was a Donald Ross. And all those courses, even up in the Canadian Open, he's gained strokes putting. Uh, finished T4 last year at the Canadian Open in a strong field. Um, his putter, like I said, it's been really hot. The only issue with our guy Sam Burns from uh, Louisiana is uh, his greens and regulation and his uh, scrambling from the sand could be a little bit better, but oh, everything I thought you were else... going to say the cold ghoster because he's from Louisiana. He, uh, he, 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 he that New York, those New York conditions. Nah, uh, nah, you just look at Sam Burns. <laughs> he looks like a guy that'd be, you know, he's got the gun in the back pocket, you know, he, he's ready to go. Yeah, he's a yeehaw. He's a, <laughs> a Louisiana boy. But uh, yeah, you have Sam any bombs Burns... like 200 to one, like Nate Lashley, like some guy like that. You want to know who it my is bomb is? Here? Cam, what? my bomb is going to be it in is. the lift. I go on live tour for this bomb. And okay. this guy almost, what did he do last year at this event? He almost won. He went in the water guys on 18. It was just too much to, to even wow. talk about. Mito. 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 Mito it's, it. it's Mito, Mito season again. It's Mito season boys. And he's been playing damn well on the, uh, on the live tour here. I'm just bringing up his numbers here quickly. Fifth at Singapore, 27th, 43rd at the masters, then six at Orlando, six at Tucson. Uh, like I said, T three at the PGA. He, uh, he gained strokes uh, at the U.S. Open 2022. The big thing with Mito, though, guys, it's hard to find stats on these live players, but to, um, distance from 200 yards out, greens and regulation, 53%. That's literally best between all live and uh, PGA players. So he's number one. Uh, this is two-year sample size, too. And then also his uh, from the rough from 150 out, he's 51%, which is like top 40. So right there telling me that uh, his approach is, is going to be better than most. Uh, from that distance, and he's gained 1.04 strokes in his last um, five events on the field. So, what about the Gooch? At, at 190, I got him. There's another guy, first round leader, Cam. This guy loves coming out hot he's early. Playing well, actually, isn't he? he is. The last few events, he's won. Right? He like, won yes. both. He won yeah, both he events, won. There, guys. Yeah, he's playing really well this week. I haven't seen him on the leaderboard, but another golfer that's uh, right there. He was T14 at the Masters 2022, T34, T20. He's definitely going to make the cut. I think first round leader. That's where I actually played him already, guys. First round leader I like that. on um, on Taylor Gooch, fifty five to one. I want a little Gooch. bit more, but man, uh, I like that guy. It's I think tough with Gooch... some of the live guys, just just like you're yeah. saying, not only the stats, but just you know how much are these tournaments? You know, I know they're competitive, but I don't. You know, like they're wearing shorts or having to play three rounds. I don't know. They got team events. They're they're making a ton of money. It's and, true. What about your boy Neiman then? Is it Neiman and Pereira? Like, can't yeah, you, you want to talk about the weather, Cam? This is a guy. He's gonna have <laughs> no. He's skinnier than me. How the hell is he gonna go out there from all the way from? Like, I'm just saying. Like, I, I this is the weather. <laughs> I just love your your, your weather. <laughs> this is a weather like, angle. Uh, this is a weather here. angle. Where is he in my notes? I said, God, no weather conditions. Yeah, he's not Skinny gonna make. Me and C-Mac it. are thick. We we laugh at this weather. I'll go play. I can really, like, that's when I when I see a Zalatoris or, or Neiman, I'm thinking, man, these guys are going to be done, especially if they got the bundle up. But Neiman does check a lot of boxes. His actually has around the green here. Where the hell is he? Yeah, it starts with a J. That's right. You're skinny um, like that. Just have a shot of Bailey's in your coffee or yeah. whatever. It'll keep you warm for a few holes. Figure ne it out. Ne Neiman's going to be interesting. His, his actually his approach here, Cam. Um, that was his issue. His approach this last few events have not been there. He's been losing yeah. strokes on a lot of his approach. Did finish T16 at the Masters, but I'm not going to take uh, Neiman. I think uh, I think there's other guys out there I, I would want. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll bring up another one here from the Live Tour, though. I got a little bit of chalk. Uh, this is another one. 36 to one, Cam Smith. You know what? Short game. If I want a guy with short game, he was 100% on Sunday. Other than I think it was 16, he just went in the bunker. But he's got a great short game. It's coming into form. His distance, actually, the farther he is with his approach, the better he is. Um, we all know how good his putter is. He's already won the Open just what, less than a year ago. Um, I think this type of course, like a Jordan Spieth, uh, Cam Smith, he's in a lot better form than he was at the Masters 2, guys. 36 to 1. We're getting a nice price, in my opinion. And I'm also going to take him for a top 10. Um, or is he here? Plus 320 on Cam Smith. What do you think oh, of the uh, Joe Dirt? I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I, I, I got to be honest with you. I, the price is nice, but yeah, I don't know. Gogster, like, I, I, how many bullets can I have in the in the gun? Like, I got, I can't take everybody. I got to like break it up, break it up, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
Like how many? And guys he was a guy that outright? like. Six. Yeah, it was so good for me last year. You know, we won so much money. I was on those wins, and it's like I want to go back, but maybe it's this isn't. It's tough. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's a great yeah. price. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not. It, 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 it is a great price, and he's coming off. Of, I believe it was second place. He just got here. I uh, I think it was DJ did win this. Uh, I know they're tied still. Wow, this event's still going on. DJ Cam Smith, Brandon Grace are all tied. Like but I just, Cam Smith, you know what? Same with DJ. You can say the same thing with DJ, but um, I'm going to trust Cam Smith here. I'm going to bring up just quickly see if I got some of his numbers, but he's on the damn live tour. Another one, you can't find much stats. Gain 1.02 strokes on the field. You know what? I'm just, it's just more of an eye test on Cam Smith. Uh, I'll be rooting him on there. Aussie pride for the, for the lot. Uh, 28 to one. I'm going to take him here. Um, I, I just another- can't believe Gogster. I was looking at the odds. I thought Dustin Johnson had like a seven shot lead or something. Like these other guys were huge underdogs. Like he was a monster favorite. He must be imploding. He right? was like four. Yeah, he was like 14 to one yes. live or something, Cam. Yeah, it was yeah. insane. I was looking he, at it going like Cam Smith was like 20 and Grace was. Hmm. He whatever. triple bogeyed number 10. Yeah, he tripled number 10, DJ, made a seven. Oh, Lord, help him. Um, so yeah, DJ just kind of doing what DJ does. I'm not going to be on DJ this week. His number's like 20 to one, too. You're giving me Cam nope. Smith at 35. And if Cam wins this one, guys, that number is going to drop. So, uh, hopefully you can get on that before, uh, before earlier than, uh, than later, uh, on our guy, uh, Cam Smith. One more for you guys here. I got a couple more, but for the chalk, uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick, what do you guys think of Matt Fitzpatrick? Hey, Honor, I just won with him. I just won with him. Um, you know, but he's off a major last year. I don't know if he wins this week. I you like know, him, if, but yeah. Again, like I, I, I don't know what to do. Like I, I'm just, I literally look at like Clark and these other guys, and I feel just as good about them than these other guys at like twenty five and thirty. Yeah, I really yeah, do. At that price, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just talking about uh, Fitzpatrick, guys. He hasn't lost a stroke putting. His putting, he's gained strokes on the field mm-hmm. since February fifth at the AT and T. He's around the green. He does that weird. He'll he'll, he'll go lefty low around the green and and, and chip uh, reverse style. Uh, it, it's working at the at the Canadian Open. He he played very well. He won the U.S. Open, which is in a very similar old school track that was at the I think it was the Country Club that was in New York. So. Or Boston, so he's he's a guy that just fits the bill and wetter conditions, colder colder weather, you know, from England, bringing in the weather again. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take Fitzpatrick, guys, thirty five to one. Um, just just had to make the card here. So so far we got twenty four on Alexander, we got twenty nine on Finau, we got thirty six on Cam Smith, and uh, thirty five on Fitz, forty seven on, on on Burns. Yeah, the three guys I'm looking at to maybe add Burns, and I like your Fitzpatrick, and I still have to look around on Shoffle. I, I want a little bit more, but I don't think I'm going to get more. That's the problem. I already yeah. know who my bombs are. Yeah, I, could, yeah. I couldn't agree anymore. They, like, the only issue with Xander will just be, is he going to be able to adjust in, I think, colder conditions? But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if uh, Gokes is just uh, in orbit here and fired from his weather drop. Uh, we're just like that. Um, but yeah, yeah anyways, anyways, guys, <laughs> yeah, weather uh, channel. Uh, I, I, yeah. like, I, I know I've broken down golf with you, Ghost. I've never heard your this like weather angle go this hard, okay. like a little bit, but like you're really into it now. Just be, I, the, you know what, Ken? They, they never have this PG up here. It wouldn't have happened if in Rochester in the middle of May, but they agreed on this like way back when it was supposed to be in, in, in August or when it usually is. So you're never going to see this event up here. And last time I checked, actually, I'm going to keep bringing this up. That morning wave, you can't tell me you're not going to see guys just looking at each other going like, Jesus, this is cold up here. Uh, it's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be 6, 5 Celsius. It's going to warm up as it, uh, which is like. Well, you'll be there, right? We need a report yeah. from the ground. You know what? I'll okay. be there at 7 in the, I'll be there 7 in the morning, a <laughs> couple beers in hand. Uh, I'll be right there early. Check the Twitter account, guys, Eagle 47. I'll have some uh, live feeds for you guys. Letting you know the weather report, the do, what's going on. Um, see well, it will uh, play longer, right, Goldster? So you can't it, take a guy that, that's going to be putting it around. I no. will say in the morning you're going to have to be kind yes. of a bomber, right? And or- Yes, it, it, I think so, Cam. And then especially Saturday, Sunday, it's going to rain Friday night. And then it's going to be nicer Saturday, Sunday. But it's still going to be that wet, kind of cooler wet. If it's not, If it's not warmer and the sun's not out, 
how's it going to dry up? Even with that new irrig irrigation system, Mikey M was talking about. So mm -hmm. you're going to need carry distance, guys. I, I think that's one of the key, key stats here. If your golfer doesn't have much carry distance, how the hell is he going to, you know, he's going to be hitting four or five, six irons, six, seven irons, where other guys are hitting eight nines. So I just think that's a, a something to keep in mind. And one more stat here before we, uh, before we get out and recap our picks, every win since 2012, um, has had the the masters they've, they've made the cut at the masters so since 2012 every pga winner has made the cut at the masters just something i don't know if you want to take too much into that cam connor everyone else in the chat all of our viewers but um maybe uh just something you can uh, cut down your research just look at golfers that have made the cut at the masters because i do think this is a similar track cam it is bent grass you're not going to have as much uh undulation on the greens but it is uh it is a it is a bent grass style um, golf course so i like it yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, guys, before we get out of here, uh, it's been a treat, Cam, as always, having you on, buddy. I'll, uh, I'll hopefully be seeing, uh, seeing you this summertime. We can link up for a pint. Um, Connor, How am I going to see you if I'm working all the time? Like, that's the whole thing. You I don't work, work I don't get money. You haven't worked a Friday in, like, months, Cam. Don't lie to me. It's true, but you don't know what's going on in my life. Like, I, 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 have, anyway, I have two anyway. senior parents that I look after. Go, you don't think I want to be golfing? I hear I you. I got, I got golfing. grandparents. I got grandparents. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, I, 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 I love you. Anyway, buddy. we'll talk. We'll I love talk. you. Buddy. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get together uh, later on there for I sure. Hope so. Connor, Connor, um, can you recap yep. some of uh, the players you're going uh, going to be looking yes. at? Some of the players you'll be betting uh, to close this. Yeah, we talked about. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to go. I looked at Spieth, Burns at the top, but I will throw it out here in a couple of days. But below top 20, let's touch on a, a few. Uh, but I mentioned Scott Bradley, Siwoo yeah. Kim. Even a guy like you said, he's from there. B. Woo. This guy's been uh, cash for me. Uh, you know, a few top 10s. Maybe he can make the cut. Yeah, we could take him top 30. Um, but I want to touch on a few, maybe just some bigger prices. Seamus Power, these type of. Uh, Top 20, type 30. Uh, I'm looking at guys like that. I'm going to dig in a little bit more uh, the next couple of days. And like I said, I will post it as always, my man. Beauty, beauty. Awesome. Look forward to seeing those picks, guys. Check him out, Connor Mac Picks on Twitter. Oh, Adam Scott. Did I forget Scott? That was one of my bigger ones. Yeah, definitely no, top 10. Yeah, yeah definitely Scott. Scott. Yeah, if his putter can, uh, can get it done, then yeah, I definitely uh, I would agree there. Um, Cam, who do you got? Who are you looking at for everyone in the, in the chat, all of our viewers here? Okay, guys, I bet Hatton at 55, Bradley at 70, Clark at 80, and I really – I know what? I'm thinking Burns, Fitz, and Scott are guys I'm going to sprinkle on. I love it. I, yeah, I, and I think, you know what, getting those prices, guys, I, I think that's what you got to do. And even live betting, take, take a, t leave a little bit of money, leave some spare change for a little bit of live bets because you're going to probably get some golfers you're going to see at better odds. You're going to be like, you know what, yeah. I am. Well, here, I'm that's like John Rahm. Let's just talk about it. with the Masters, with him, with Kepka. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have got him at, at a decent price, you know, down. Then, then I'm just saying, um, I don't know, you know, just, yeah, if you're looking at some of these guys, chalk and shit like that, if Wait. they're back a few a day, on a Saturday, yada, 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 you know, get to the, get to the live betting. And especially if I, we're expecting this course guys to play tough for Saturday, Sunday. So you're going to need those golfers. Yeah. Like Kepka, those, those real, you know, Schefflers, the, the, the ROMs uh, uh, and company that are just going to show up. One thing before we go, what do you guys think of Kepka and some of these live golfers? Um, I know we talked about some other golfers, but Kepka, especially, what do you guys think of Kepka? He almost won that masters. I don't want him. I don't want him at all. He, he, he's yeah. there though he's healthy we got it that's the thing we got a healthy he is uh, uh, the price i don't want him but he he looked really good till sunday he did he did those three days he looked like the old capca and uh you know so the joke kind of was shop or capca or one of those other because they're in the same region like you can't exactly like we got would you rather go capca than can't bet you know? everybody yeah, this is this is a thing where you're saying, Cam, I've been on Xander since I feel like the beginning of time and I haven't hit him. So yeah. I, I have to stick with Xander here. Kepka, he does have a great track record here. Looking at 2018, 19, the guy all he knew how to do was win majors. So uh, and he almost won the Masters. I'm a little nervous for Kepka, but we'll see. Might be a live play on Kepka. Uh, my picks, guys, before we get out of here, I got uh, our guy Xander, 24 to 1. I'm also rocking and rolling with Tony Baloney, Tony Finau, Cam Smith, mm. Matt Patrick. Sammy Burns, who loves to putt up here in Canada. Wyndham Clark with Cam Stewart, 82 to 1. 
Uh, Patrick Reed. You know what, guys? Everyone hates on Patrick Reed. I won't be telling people at this event I got a ticket on Patrick Reed because I'd probably get beat up in the corner. Uh, but I am going to put a ticket on Patrick Reed, 100 to 1, <laughs> short game master. You know, that that's what you're going to want. And he has been playing really well. Uh, he's finished in the top uh, 20 this week. And uh, he did play quite well at the Masters. So, yeah, you know, I don't care if he's a jerk. He's disrespected. He shouldn't be at those odds. It's ridiculous. Oh, 100 to 1, Cam. You know what? I don't want to say this book, but uh, Pinnacle uh, has uh, <laughs> some uh, odds uh, yeah. that are really good. Uh, that are better than odd others. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's great odds you can get on Patrick Reed, guys. Uh, and also Mito Pereira, 190 to 1 on Mito Pereira. Oh just, just about one hole away from literally winning this thing. And I think it was like 240 to 1 that was last year, something in the 200. So, Mito Pereira, guys, 190 to 1. First round leaders, I'll tweet them out as well, guys. Top 10s, 20s, matchup bets as they come out, all that uh, good jazz. Uh, Cam, Connor, it's been a treat as always, guys, having this uh, talk with uh, just happened in PGA golf, you name it, uh, especially going to be there live Friday. I can't wait. I'll be uh, tweeting everything out there, guys. So it's uh, it's awesome having you on. And um, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, enjoy it, man. I have another. I see you drinking Miller Lite. Uh, bring the hard stuff. Oh, well, well that's the thing. The beer or alcohol is cheap there, Cam. I can just go to the convenience store, right? And just as I told you, I stayed at Niagara Falls with my girlfriend. We getting 60s of Smirnoff for $18. We almost oh. flipped out in the liquor warehouse. She's like, fill the cart, fill the cart, fill the cart. Same one, 70 like... bucks here. Oh, we get absolutely, uh, anyway, you know, the R. I'm going to have to pay tax. Smoke. I'm going to have to pay tax or, or pay uh, equity on all this alcohol I'm going to bring back. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, good to know. It's going to be a good. Yeah, hit a winner's right, guys. <laughs> hit a winner's right. I got seven, eight picks, guys. Tweet them out there. Connor and uh, and um, Cam here, they're also going to be on Twitter there, so check them out. Uh, until our next major there, uh, which will be the U.S. Open in L.A., the L.A. Country Club, that's when uh, you won't have to worry about the the long sleeves and the, uh, yeah. the parka sweaters. So uh, I might be looking at guys like Morikawa and Neiman. Anyways, guys, we'll be back for the big one in uh, June. Cam, Connor, be good. Thanks a lot, guys, and uh, hit them straight, everyone.